ruins of 11 cities belonging to an unknown culture have been discovered in the Bolivian jungle. Archaeologists have discovered the ruins of 11 previously unknown cities and settlements in the Bolivian jungle. The landscape revealed by Lidar technology showed interconnected settlements and urban centers, monumental structures dikes and canals that often stretch for miles in a straight line across the plains. According to the researchers, these structures were created between 500 and 1400 and were built by members of a hitherto unknown culture called Kassarabe. Using helicopter-mounted ladars, a team of mostly European archaeologists scanned a large area of present-day northern Bolivia. Archaeologists have discovered the vast ruins of Amazonian cities and settlements once inhabited by thousands of people. In total, the terrain scanning technology imaged 26 settlements hidden under seemingly impenetrable vegetation. Eleven of them were previously unknown to archaeologists. The study area was in the Lanos de Mojos, or Lanos de Moxos, region in the Beni department in northern Bolivia. Of the 11 previously unknown settlements, two, named Kotoka and Landibar, are large settlements. They seem to have once been vibrant communities with their own ceremonial architecture and water management infrastructure of canals and reservoirs. In Kotoka and Landibar, the team discovered huge earth mounds up to 22 meters high. The new study used the LIDAR system, which is short for, light detection and ranging. It is a measurement method based on irradiating the target with a laser and registering the reflection with sensors. Differences in the return time of the reflected light beam and the change in wavelength are used to create three-dimensional terrain models. Thanks to this breakthrough technology, which has taken a high place among the tools useful to archaeologists by storm. You can see the topography of the land without the top layer of vegetation. Ladar penetrates the tree canopy and reflects the three-dimensional forms of archaeological features hidden beneath the vegetation. Researchers can digitally remove trees, plants, and even water from images, revealing hidden structures. Ladar has already proven its usefulness. In 2018, with the help of this technology, in the Guatemalan jungle, the ruins of over 60,000 houses, palaces and other structures that had been hidden from the sight of modern man for centuries were discovered. Thanks to Ladar, archaeologists also revealed the true size of the 40,000-year-old city of Angamaco, found a decade ago buildings and other structures. The history of this discovery dates back more than 20 years, when Heiko Prumers of the German Archaeological Institute and Carla Jamies Bettencourt of the University of Bonn, then still a student in La Paz, began archaeological excavations near the village of Casarabe in northern Bolivia, in the southwestern Amazon. The subject of the research were two mounds located near the village. Although the plains there are flooded for several months of the year during the rainy season and do not encourage permanent settlement, researchers have found many traces of human activity before the Spanish colonization in the first half of the 16th century. Apart from the aforementioned mounds, these were mainly dikes and canals. Initial research has revealed that the Casarabe culture, named after the village where excavations began more than 20 years ago, lived in the area between 500 and 1400 and covered an area of about 16,000 hectares square kilometers. The mounds that initially intrigued scientists turned out to be the eroded stumps of pyramids. This indicated a relatively dense pre-Hispanic settlement. Our goal was to conduct basic research, says Heiko Prumas. However, the dense vegetation that hid the ancient buildings prevented further discoveries. In 2019, scientists used LIDAR technology 
The first results were excellent and showed that the technology is effective even in dense rainforest. Since then, there has been a desire to map even larger areas of the Kasarabe cultural site using LIDAR technology, reveals Prumas. Scientists have mapped about 200 square kilometers of the area around Kasarabe. The imaging revealed two unusually large urban areas of 147 hectares and 315 hectares. These sites are as big as Bonn was in the 17th century, says Betancourt of the settlements named Landivar and Kotoka. Researchers have not yet estimated how many people lived in the discovered settlements. However, the very layout of the settlement tells us that many people worked here, including planners. For the first time, we can refer to pre-Hispanic urban planning in the Amazon and show a map of the Kotoka site, the largest settlement of the Kasarabe culture known to us so far, emphasizes Prumas. Ladar revealed huge squares in the centers of settlements, stepped platforms crowned with U-shaped structures and pyramids, or rather their remains, up to 22 meters high. Individual settlements were connected by paths and canals. The entire region was densely settled, which overturns all previous concepts, Betancourt points out. This is the first clear evidence of urban communities in this part of the Amazon basin, says Jonas Gregorio de Souza, an archaeologist at Pompeu Fabra University in Barcelona, Spain. This indicates that the Amazon, long considered a virgin wilderness until the arrival of the Spaniards, was home to advanced societies. Until now, the prevailing view was that before the arrival of the Europeans, all inhabitants of the Amazon lived in small, nomadic tribes that had little influence on the world around them. And although early European visitors described a landscape filled with towns and villages, modern archaeologists have omitted these accounts, primarily because they have been unable to find them. Various scholars have argued that the nutrient-poor soil of the Amazon was not sufficient to support large-scale agriculture. However, over time, the thinking of archaeologists began to change. After 2018, when deforestation at the southern end of the Amazon rainforest uncovered hundreds of large geometric mounds that hinted at ancient organized societies capable of thriving in one place for years, the old concepts were hard to sustain. Researchers emphasize that with all the euphoria associated with mapping and the possibilities offered by LIDAR technology, the real archaeological work is only just beginning. The aim of the researchers is to better understand how the discovered settlements, especially the two large centers, functioned. Scientists are also interested in why cities and settlements were abandoned. Radiocarbon dating revealed that in about 1400 Kasarabe was abandoned. We don't have much time. The spread of agriculture is destroying pre-Columbian structures in the Lanos de Mojos region every month, including mounds, canals and dikes, says Betancourt. An ancient tooth found in Laos reveals Denisovan's secrets. A molar found in Laos may be the first material evidence that an extinct human species known as the Denisovans traveled long distances and was able to adapt to different climatic conditions. A fossilized tooth found in a cave in northern Laos may belong to a Denisovan girl who died between 131,000 and 164,000 BCE years ago. If the scientists' predictions are confirmed, it will be the first fossil evidence that the Denisovans, an extinct human species that coexisted with Neanderthals and modern humans, lived in Southeast Asia. The girl's molar is just the second fossil associated with the Denisovans found outside of Siberia. Its presence in Laos supports the idea that the species had a much wider geographic range than previous fossil records indicate. 
We've always assumed that Denise Evans were present in this part of the world, but we've never had physical evidence of that, said study co-author Laura Shackelford, a paleoanthropologist at the University of Illinois. It's proof that they were really there, he says. Denise Evans were first identified in 2010, when scientists obtained a DNA sequence from a finger bone found in Denisova Cave in Siberia. Researchers then showed that it belonged to a previously unknown species of ancient man. Later genetic analysis revealed that millions of people from Asia, Oceania and the Pacific Islands carry traces of Denisovan DNA. DNA studies suggest that this species was found far beyond Siberia. However, so far there has been no hard archaeological evidence to support such a thesis. All the Denisovan fossil records so far come down to a handful of teeth, a jawbone found in Tibet, and smaller pieces of bone. Almost all of the specimens, including a piece of bone belonging to a half Denisian girl whose mother was a Neanderthal, come from Denisova Cave. This is because fossils are more likely to survive in cold, dry conditions than in warm, humid places. In 2018, Shackelford and her colleagues searched for potential excavation sites in northern Laos. By chance, they came across a cave, simply filled with teeth. They belong to many species, including giant tapirs, deer, pigs and ancient relatives of modern elephants. The collection was probably assembled by porcupines collecting bones to sharpen their teeth and obtain nutrients, says Shackelford. Among the first batch of fossils recovered from the cave was a small, undeveloped harmonin tooth. Dating of the rocks in the cave and the teeth of the animals showed that the harmonin tooth predated the arrival of modern humans in the area. It was a huge surprise, says Shackelford. Her team didn't expect to find the remains of ancient humans. Initially, researchers thought the tooth might have belonged to Homo erectus, an ancient human species that lived in Asia between 2 million and 100,000 years ago. However, the molar found was too complex to be Homo erectus. While the fossil also shares some characteristics with Neanderthal teeth, it is also too big and a little weird, says Bence Viola, a paleoanthropologist at the University of Toronto in Canada. The molar tooth bears the closest resemblance to the teeth found in the jawbone of the Denisovans of Tibet. The Denisovans had absolutely gigantic teeth, says Viola. So it seems like a good assumption that it's probably a hominy tooth of this species. The roots of the tooth are not fully developed, so it probably belonged to a child. The researchers also found that the enamel lacked certain peptides that are linked to the Y chromosome, which may indicate that the tooth belonged to a woman. Katerina Duca, an archaeologist at the University of Vienna, says that reconstructing the identity of a person whose bones have lain in tropical conditions for thousands of years is a real challenge. Without more fossils or DNA analysis, we can't actually tell if this single and poorly preserved molar belonged to a Denisovan, he says. But Viola says the discovered molar is, in the right place and time, to belong to a Denisovan. If confirmed, it would turn out that this species was able to adapt to different environmental conditions. At the time of the death of the tooth's owner, the area was lightly forested and had a temperate climate, quite different from the freezing temperatures faced by the Denisovans in Siberia and Tibet. The ability to live in different climatic conditions would distinguish Denisovans from Neanderthals, whose bodies were adapted to life in colder places, and make them more similar to our species. Even with the uncertainties, this discovery is likely to encourage other researchers to look for ancient human fossils in Southeast Asia, says Viola. When we started looking in Laos, 
Everyone thought we were crazy, says Shackelford. But if we were able to find things like this tooth, which we didn't even anticipate, then there's probably more to be found.